There are two Americas. There's the idealized, rags to riches story, like that of Mr. Strauss. An immigrant climbing their way to the top with nothing more than a great idea and perseverance. Then there's the America Emmett Till and Edgar Mevers experienced. It's this contradiction that fueled millions of Americans from all corners to unite and demand that this country live up to the promise of being more perfect. The 1960s are defined by the cultural explosion of music, fashion, and a general acceptance of each other. This manifested in anti-war protest, but more significantly in the long run, the civil rights movement. America had a deep racial problem that needed to be addressed. Americans of all walks marched together in peaceful demonstrations, taking beating after beating in front of cameras where the public could see the atrocities of this split America. The movement would gain steam throughout the 60s, and there is some difference in the country before and after, but for many still, it's hard to say what improvements actually occurred because there is still such a long way to go. While I love to cover these momentous eras in the history of these videos, the question for this channel, and one you won't get from other history channels is, why denim? Why did denim become a symbolic clothing fabric for the civil rights movement? Well, to summarize the theories put forth, I think it all comes down to unity. The primary reason denim was a popular material was its price and availability. A lot of young adults had jeans since they exploded in popularity during the 50s. Students, laborers, and cool cats from everywhere were able to join in on this movement. You wouldn't be turned away for not fitting the dress code. A more ominous theory is that denim was reminiscent of the clothes worn by sharecroppers. This was the form slavery took after the Civil War. Denim got its shining moment on April 12, 1963, when Martin Luther King marched in Birmingham wearing a pair of Levi's 501 jeans, rigid with the ankles and a thick single cuff. Okay, I can't be certain from this picture which jeans he's wearing, but here's what I like to think. Dr. King walked into the store, looked at the available pairs of jeans, Lee's, Levi's, Wrangler, and Carhartt. And he might have been thinking, mm, Wrangler's too aggressive. Levi's, well, that's the priestly tribe from the Bible. And being a reverend, Dr. King went with a pair of Levi's. 501s, maybe 551Zs were available at the time. Not much for choice, though. This march would end with his arrest. While in jail, he penned the now famous letter, Letter from Birmingham Jail. And you know how we love reading letters on this channel? This is one of those pieces of literature that's an inexhaustible. There are dozens of quotes used again and again from this masterpiece. The following year, Dr. King would become Time's Man of the Year. And the Civil Rights Act of 1964 would pass Congress. As the 60s rolled into the 70s, denim was there for the ride. The new generation seeking equality for black Americans were taking jeans and Type 3 denim jackets to be their official outfits. Levi's Archives did a great video about this, link in descript. America is by no means perfect, but it is a much better country because of the civil rights movement. I love that they made this cool detail chart that points out all the features on it. For the 1963 501s, you get 12 ounce Red Lion Selvage denim made from dead stock cone mills with a weave that replicates denim from the actual 1960s pairs. Now, as far as using dead stock cone mills, this is like the fourth time they've said that it was the last of the cone mills. So I'm starting to think they might even have some dead stock Amaskiat rolls lying around. Cone Mills denim will fetch a much higher resale value than the alternative Karahari denim. You also get a button fly with this pair, like most 501s, with a zinc button. Zinc buttons changed in the 50s, and I, I noticed that zinc buttons tend to rattle compared to the heavy steel buttons. Concealed rivets on the back pockets, this is a true classic feature. 
orange line stitching mixed alongside the yellow lemon stitching. Yellow dominated the 1950s, while phasing into the orange happened during the early 60s. By the late 60s, all orange stitching. An offset rear belt loop. This is the special feature that you only get from an actual historic pair from the era, or in the LVC collection with the 1963, the 1960s, and some of the 1953 pairs. There's a Jackron patch featuring double X, but without every garment guaranteed. This is another small detail that changed during this time. On the back pockets, you'll see double needle arcuate stitching and a big E double-sided red tab. All pairs are limited edition, numbered out of 501 pairs. So there's 1,002 pairs of the 1963s, 500 inside outs, plus one, and 501 rigid. The fit is true to size. It is close to the 1966 pair, which I absolutely love. This pair sits at the waist, not too tight, not too loose. Do buy your own true size. Don't downsize, especially if you are gonna shrink. I really do not recommend shrinking because they're limited editions. Just wear them from rigid or the wear them from the inside out unwashed. I'd like to thank D Bao for the fit video. You can follow him on Instagram. Perfect job. There are only two variations for the 1963 501s, and they are both limited editions. Only 501 of each pair made. Of course there's a rigid! This could be the last of the Cone Mills dead stock fabric, or not. Either way, this is the true 63 pair, whereas the inside outs are circa. Both fit the same details. For the inside outs, Check out my full video coverage on the Inside Out Circa 1963 pair. One thing I really have to say about the idea of the Inside Outs is that they should distress over time with darker lines instead of white cracks. Here's the letter for the rigid pair. A lot happened in 1963. It was a year of great unrest, hope, and action. The women's movement reawakened with the help of a best-selling feminist book, and JFK signed the Equal Pay Act, and was assassinated that same year. Martin Luther King Jr. wrote his famous letter to the people from an Alabama jail cell, and thousands of Americans, young and old alike, flooded the streets to stand up for civil rights. The first female cosmonaut achieved orbit a little British group, soon to inspire worldwide mania, recorded their very first album in one day. And Levi's became the uniform of choice for the free-thinking youth at the forefront of the hippie movement. Flash forward a few decades. By the late 80s, vintage Levi's jeans had become popular collectibles, with the red tab as the focus. For seasoned thrifters, a big E found only on Levi's manufactured before 1971 meant scoring a pair of authentic vintage 501 jeans. Even rarer and highly coveted was a double-sided big E red tab. With this reproduction of Levi's 1963 501 jeans, we're excited to reintroduce this part of Levi's history to our most enthusiastic collectors. And here's a different letter for the inside out pairs to the owner of this 501 jean. These are a reproduction of a recent Levi Strauss and Company Archives acquisition from circa 1963. A fascinating pair of Levi's 501 jeans constructed inside out using the reverse side of the denim. Rumor has it that they were a gift from Levi's executive to a fishing buddy in the early 60s as some sort of inside joke or inside out joke anyway. Levi's Archives found the original pair through an Oregonian who evidently acquired it from the estate of the prominent local whitewater rafter and outfitter guide. Supposedly, one of the guide's fishing customers was a Levi's executive, and when they first met, 
the guide was wearing a different brand of jeans. Scandalous! That Christmas, the executive sent him a box full of Levi's. Sometime later, he sent along these one-of-a-kind jeans. Over the years, the two men became buddies and enjoyed many fishing trips together. That's the story, but our detective work is ongoing, so if you find more intel on this particular pair of jeans, please contact Levi's Archives. With the LVC collection coming to an end soon, this is the next to last of the limited editions they will offer. It could be the last of the Cone Mills denim. As for a pair of jeans compared to other LVC years, the offset belt loop is the big feature here. The more I think about the inside outs, the more I dig them. I don't personally think owning a pair of 63s will complete my collection, but I'm really glad LBC did do this year. 1963 is a huge year historically in America. 1963 is probably the last year of the 50s. The decade of the 50s spans from right after World War II ends, 1945, all the way until the end of 1963. I'm also really happy that LUC did a bridge year between 55 and 66, and this had been an 11 year gap for the last 15 years, and they filled it in this last year with 1960 and 1963's. 60 are zippered. If you are just interested in the reverse denim factor, then check out the Inside Out video for some cheaper, more available options. If you are interested in a pair of jeans that keeps the spirit of the civil rights movement, then I recommend a pair from Glenn's Denim. Glenn Lee Baird is a hardcore denim head who helped design the Lot 1s for Levi's and then launched his own company in 2019. He's got some raw salvage jeans made in the USA from denim. He's got some raw, he's got some raw salvage jeans He's got some raw salvage jeans made in the USA from denim on vintage looms. I really hope to review Glenn's denim on this channel soon. I'm Den. This has been Den Denim. I'd like to thank my Patreons, Evan Gutierrez, you the man. Get exclusive content and early commercial free access to the videos by joining the Den and Denim Patreon. It starts at a buck a month. Thanks for watching and love your jeans.